Hey, what's going on? My website is down, HosseinNasr.com. It's down. It doesn't resolve. I woke up this morning. It's like, what is going on? <laughs> it never, it never went down for the last 10 years since I registered it. And uh, I thought since I do talk about outages uh, in this channel, and uh, I thought uh, I really need to talk my own outage. So have fun. Welcome to the Backend Engineering Show with your host, Hussein Nasr. Let's talk about this outage. HusseinNasr.com went down and uh, the spoiler alert it's the dns okay so the, long story short but i wanted to take this video for those interested to actually know what is going on behind the scenes so i'm going to talk about what is my website used for that's why i'm not losing sleep over it but uh, there are some critical pieces when i heavily use the dns that went down and it's, it's just uh, it, it is making me slightly upset about that, right? Uh, the other portion, really, I don't really w worry much about the content itself, about the website, right? The second part is I talk about the DNS itself, how DNS works, and my I'm going to talk about my DNS registrar and uh, w why is it happening, and then finally about talk about uh, some summary and then what am I plan to do in the future. So let's get into it. So on my website, HosseinNasr.com, I registered that website back in 2012. And uh, the only reason I wanted to reserve my name because everybody was talking about, oh, have your own name as your um, as a website. And so I did it, HosseinNasr.com. And uh, the backend is really uh, googleblogspot.com, which was renamed to blogger.com, which is the Google blogging services that Google, Google paying zero attention to effectively. It's like it was popular back in the day when I started 2009. That's when I started Blogspot. My my blog my website was Hussein.blogspot.com, and then I just registered the domain around it. So that's what I used it for. I wrote silly blogs back in the day. You can go and read them. One of the many many ideas that I write. Whenever I have an idea, I write it down. Uh, I had an idea to store uh, bits in molecules of water and then have a, a, a device controller that can effectively read and understand the molecules of water and effectively gives you you know storage you know i had all idea it's like oh you have you'll have your 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 drive and you can just pour more water and you have more disk content your storage obviously it has a lot of you know some limitations the idea but i kind of laid it down I'll, I'll have the link for it if you're interested once the website is back up but yeah i used to write blogs like that things like over the top and but that's it and then when i started my youtube channel and then my udemy courses i started not really much using the 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 site itself but i use the domain i rely on the domain stuff i create a lot of c names uh the points to my Udemy courses with uh, uh, with the, with the coupon applied, you know. So I used, for example, database.hosseinnasr.com, which points to a server that has effectively just reroutes uh, the, uh, the the that URL back to Udemy with the latest. Uh, discount coupon this way i only share this link database.hasenasa.com and every month if i change the coupon people don't have to worry about worrying about different urls right it's just the same url right so it's just i i, I change the back end and effectively just change the re redirect very basic stuff so i i rely on creating these c names which is these aliases and uh, today I wanted to try. I was like, okay, is my coupon expired or not? I just went there and then database that said nasr.com is just not resolving. It's like, what is going on? So I went to, it's like, okay, Google's not down, of course. And so I went to the enum, which is my domain registrar. It's just like, hey, it's down. What is going on? It's a scheduled maintenance. So they started the scheduled maintenance uh, yesterday. January 15th at 6 p.m. PST, Pacific Standard Time. Are we in started or daytime? I, I, I forgot this day changes. I, I don't keep track anymore. And uh, yeah, and it's still going. It's been over 12 hours. They claim that it should go back on 
12 p.m. PST, January 16th. Hopefully, everything will go back. But I thought I'll talk about how really DNS work. So I keep saying this DNS registrar, and what, is, what does that stuff really mean, right? When I, when I type HusseinNasser.com, right, uh, or you type this, the first thing that goes is the client tries to resolve this DNS, right? Uh, the client tries to resolve this domain back to an IP address. So it knows that it needs to do something called a DNS query. So it talks to the closest things to it, which is the DNS recursor. And uh, this is usually your ISP, or sometimes if you're fancy, you might have changed your own DNS recursor to be Cloudflare 1111 or Google 8888, right? The, the, the only job for that is to start the DNS query. That's it, right? So say someone wants to look up HasseinNasser.com, right? That's what it wants to. So as a summary of how the DNS recursor works, what it needs to answer is the IB address, IB, the IP address of HasseinNasser.com, right? It needs to find the matching record. HasseinNasser.com is this IP address. That's what it needs to do. But here's what happens. This entry, this record, this row, this database row lives on a server somewhere. I'm going to talk about where it lives in a minute. Actually, spoiler alert, it lives on my enum registrar server, right? Authoritative name server. So that's, that's where it lives. But guess what? But I need the IP address of this server that this entry lives in, right? Because uh, Cloudflare or the DNS recursor doesn't know that, right? So it needs that IP address first of where that thing lives that my record actually lives in. Okay. So in order to answer that question, it needs to ask the parent who, where is HusseinNasser.com lives as a record, not the IP address of HusseinNasser.com. Where does HusseinNasser live? Right. Spoiler, California. Okay, so where does it live? And it lives on this IP address. So where does it, who should I ask to answer this question, where this record lives? It asks something called the top level domain servers, and that's the .com server. So the .com server, right? Because my site end of .com, right? It needs to ask that server, where does Hussein Nasser live which points to the ip address of where the entry of hosseinnasser.com actually lives it doesn't actually point to the actual ip address of my site no it points to the where lives so the top level domain which is .com points to that server okay it's called the authoritative name server okay now we have another problem it's like how do I know the IP address of the .com server? I don't have that stored. I might, as a recursor, I might have that cached, but I might not. So how do I get that IP address of the .com? Give me an IP address of a .com server. Because can't be just one, otherwise the internet will melt down, right? So there are many, many. Give me one IP address of a .com. And can't hard code it, because they change all the time. So the top level domain ip address as a server right is answered by something called the root domain server okay the root server and these root servers are i believe there are 13 root servers and obviously they are duplicated all around the world but they, these are well known root servers so these can be hard coded on your recursor, you know, on, on your DNS recursor, right? So, okay, let's now go back and try to answer the question now that we understood. So, there's the root servers, right? The root name servers, which answer the question where are my top level domain server live, right? Which are dot com. Dot com is this IP address. Uh, dot net is this IP address. Or dot uh, engineering is this IP address, right? It gives you one of the IP addresses and it tries to load balance as much as possible, obviously. And then points that. 
and then the, there is the top level domain. You get the top level domain server, and you ask it a question: Where does HusseinNasser.com entry lives? And you ask that to the .com server, and it will give you oh. HosseinNasser.com, last time I checked, it's, it lives on this server. Again, that's not the actual IP address of HosseinNasser.com. That is the server hosting the record and the C names and all that garbage, you know, that host me, right, as, as an entry. That's it. So this is called the authoritative name server. <laughs> so at the end of the day, it goes down to this. Oh, this is the authoritative name server. Okay. And that is my enum servers, and not just no, it's not just one; it's five, I think, I believe, or maybe maybe more. I believe they have five, yeah. And that's the authoritative name servers. So if these are down, my website is down, and we've seen many outages. Microsoft, Google, I believe Slack, they all suffer from the same problem. The moment your authoritative name servers are down. Your DNS is down. It doesn't matter how distributed DNS. Because look at this. It's all it's distributed. It's nice. But then it's, it's, it's a central point of failure. The authoritative name server, which actually hosts the record where HosseinNasser.com points to, that is down. If that's down, you can't answer anything, baby. You can't answer anything. So that's what happened. You go to the authoritative name server, and then you ask this question finally. Where is HosseinNasser.com as an IP address? Give me the IP address of HosseinNasser.com. And that gives you an IP address that, in my case, points to uh, one of the Google, you know, Blogspot servers. And you're off to, to the races. All good. So that's, that's, so that, that's how DNS works. So in my case, these authoritative name servers are dead, effectively. They are dead. Yeah, and then we've seen it. So let's go through the uh, the schedule maintenance. Let's go through the original maintenance notice. To better support our customers and ensure long-term stability, Enum will be undergoing a data center migration for a period of 12 hours. This period will be between 6 a.m. PST and 6 p.m. PST on January 15. So it's a 12-hour original outage. So it started on January 15th. And until January 15, 6 p.m. But we know that it lasted even longer than that. Enum support agent will be unable to assist outside the general inquiries as the migration will impact all systems. During the migration, both enum.com and enumcentral.com will be unavailable. This means you will be unable to log into your account or process any action via our API. This also includes, but it is not limited to, domain registration, transfer renewal, contact update, request API. This includes actions uh, related to registrant verification process. Provision, provision new mailboxes. Provision new SSL certificates. You cannot do any of this stuff. DNS will continue to resolve as in the following will remain operational. That's what they claim. DNS will continue to resolve. Eh, sorry, it did not. Email will remain operational. I don't use their email. Active issue SSL will be remain secure. We apologize. So that's that was the original notice, right? We are receiving some reports of domains using our name server which are failing to resolve. Own, owing to the migration, we are unable to research to fully understand the issue until the migration is complete. This is not an expected outcome from the migration and we are working to address this as a priority so they are working on this because we this is exactly what i'm seeing if it's scheduling maintenance you should not touch your dns because that was, that's a very critical part your dns going down i was really surprised 12 hours for 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 the dns that's just a disaster you know uh, the data center migration is continuing our dev teams testing indicates that the need to extend the migration period midnight to midnight 16 january we will keep you appraised of any update thank you for the patient understanding and then there's a bunch of updates that says uh schedule maintenance currently in progress it's currently in progress currently in progress and they kept pushing the window so so that was on january 15 2022 on around midnight almost midnight january 16th 
We are extending the maintenance window through 6 a.m. PST. We apologize for the inconvenience and very much for appreciate. We are extending our, and then they kept extending. Up until today, they are extending this to 12 p.m. Let me refresh if see if see if there are any new updates. Nope. So it's still scheduled to be coming back on 12 p.m. PST, January 16th. Still not, it's not there. But I think this is really, I think it's really bad. If you, when you originally claimed that scheduled maintenance that was not going to touch the DNS, and it did, that's really big. Right? That is really huge because that means in your architecture, you, this is something you didn't anticipate. And obviously, mistakes happen, right, guys? And, and I really, uh, if this was, if my website was really mission critical, I would be more worried. It's really not. I mean, yeah, some people will try to buy my courses through the C name entries and they won't be able to. They'll just go to udemy.com and immediately find that link obviously uh, yeah i know i'm losing some students for the past a day or so but uh, yeah if this continued i might i might consider changing my domain registrar or at least add another authoritative name server outside enum because i believe i, I can do that you know i can tell enum because what does what does the domain registrar do it 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 literally says okay I'm going to reserve HusseinNasser.com, right, from a top-level domain. I'm going to, I'm going to say, hey, it's, uh, it belongs to Enum because I'm, I'm not going to put my own private address, right? <laughs> what I register, I want, I want someone to take that responsibility. So if someone did a who is, they don't find my address, obviously, right? Or my name, right? So that now if you go do a who is it, you find that this site belongs to Enum. And that's what, that's what, this is a very valuable service. Who is, right? So they do that. And then the second thing I do is, this, hey, I, we can reserve an entry in the top level domain.com to point to whatever authoritative name server you want, right? And you can host that if you want. You, you say, hey, you own your authoritative name server. This is a DNS server you, you spin up. And then we just add an entry that say, oh, okay, hosenasa.com lives on this authoritative name server and we're going to point to that IP address. I can do that. I can, I can literally just do that. I just tell, hey, use that IP address to point to me. And I, as an authoritative name server, I'm going to answer DNS queries. That's what most hackers do, by the way. Right, they ho they host their own domain dom domain authoritative name servers, and that's what happened to Apple. Right, all any DNS query will end up into the beautiful honeypot of the you know, of the attacker. They 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 resolve all these beautiful r DNS requests, and you can carry a lot of useful information with DNS. You know, just pad anything. Any if I do anything .com, in that case, that request will come to me. Right. So if I if I sent you a script and I took your machine name, for instance, and I did a, a base sixty four, and I say, hey, okay, resolve blah 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 dot .com, or resolve your environment variable path right dot .com. it will take that content on your machine, which which will actually be your valuable path and any environment variable, any JWT tokens you might have, any access tokens, and put it in the C name section. I don't know what it's called, the the, the section before the domain name, you know, blah.hussainalsa.com. And your computer will try to resolve this as a DNS as a DNS entry. So what it what it will do? We'll say, okay, what's this? And we'll go through the DNS records. We'll go, okay, where is .com? .com is this server. Okay, where is, where is, who owns HosseinNasr.com as an authoritative, authoritative name server? Oh, it's this guy right here. This is the IP address, which is the attacker website, right? Attacker domain server. So I was, okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Who owns blah, 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 access token, JWT.HosseinNasr.com? What a beautiful thing that attacker can receive, right? He can just receive that content, and of course, it's gonna not gonna answer that question. It's, it's gonna answer, I don't know, any any. It's gonna answer any entry. It's gonna answer with any IP address. 
but you just got some useful information. You just just using just uh, uh, DNS, you know. So I find this very fascinating, you know, how DNS works. So in my case, I might consider telling Enom not. So 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 what I what I am doing right now is I'm telling Enom, hey, I'm gonna pay you a little bit more money. You guys host my record. So you spin up my authoritative name server and then put my record there and make it point to this IP address, which is my actual website, right? That's that's what I, I uh, what that's what I'm doing right now. Right. So I'm paying a little bit more money to host the entry, right? I could I could tell them, hey, you guys host and also use this as another authoritative name server. So as essentially doing load balances. So if their servers are down, go to there. So I'm going to spin up another one on AWS, for example, uh, as an authoritative name server to answer this question. But you, you see how DNS is still a central point of failure at the end of the day, right? Yeah, it's distributed. But then at the end of the day, if your authoritative name server is down, you did, right? Although you're final destination where your content actually lives is up and running your backend is happy yeah i always think about that every time i review an outage with dns it's always think about can we do dns better you know i'm not sure about that you know it's it's a it's a clever idea to have this recursiveness you know go oh this and this and this go and put into the authority and server but it's still it's a central point of failure at the end of the day right like like what, what do we see with nfts and and uh, blockchain technology is not what we technology people actually envisioned you know now what we see is nfts are all centralized it's like it's like do you did, is this what you envisioned like a blockchain it doesn't live on our phones anymore you know because that's what i i felt you know when i was like first about blockchain and all these nfts uh, i really thought that every single phone will have an app which will contribute to the blockchain it's not the case nobody is installing this app because there are millions of blockchain networks right there's not one <laughs> right and sadly what we're seeing with nft is like all the blockchain live in a central server as multiple nodes <laughs> it's like what the heck <laughs> that's just a central thing yeah you call it blockchain but it's all hosted on this network it's like yeah it's a bunch of machines that talk to each other yo it's a distributed ledger it's a distributed ledger between seven nodes that or all live in the same network that's not the case of obviously for bitcoin or ethereum ethereum might have other nodes and everywhere obviously right but yeah it's just it just uh what what happens is like it's still te technically centralized obviously uh that makes me doubt this technology you know when, when marketing people to take the lead and talk about these technologies we technology people we know what actually is going on right yeah, uh, and I don't know if this technology is ready. I think we're pushing it too hard, you know. But that's just a small rant about this blockchain stuff, right? It can be good, but I don't think it's ready. Like, I don't think users are, you know, actually going to contribute to the blockchain from their pieces of their devices, you know. Because that was the original thing that I thought about obviously i might be wrong but uh yeah guys this was been a, this has been a long very long video about the about a single outage about the website that nobody visits <laughs> all right guys i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome and by the way how's the camera quality i upgraded my gear a little bit there's a new laptop i still don't know i just don't set up yet but it's a new laptop it's so i'm so happy that is everything is as fast now like my lab my old laptop is like six year old and it's dying so i bought the m1 pro 10 core 16 gpo all that jazz beautiful stuff so fast man i have no idea how i was being living for the past six years all right guys uh, gonna see you in the next one stay awesome goodbye